Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. So today it's not a real project, but this is a good one. It's, I'm gonna go over contouring versus slicing uh, because I get a lot of questions as to why sometimes I use slicing and why sometimes I use contouring. So we will start out with this one. So this is just, uh, this is from Design Space. Let me see, let me right click on it. Here's the image number. It's, um, if you can see it here, yeah. M26FA0283, <laughs> but I just typed in stars. I went into image and uh, searched for stars, and I wanted to show you this one because when I got when I first started in um, in design space, I felt like if I got something like this, and you see it's one line item. So when I see one line item, it's not like hocus pocus over here where each you know separate piece is its own line item. This is one line item, which means it's these two little stars or whatever you want to call them and all these circles. So when you go to cut it, it's in this shape, in this with this much space in between it. And when you go cut it, it's one color, right? Whatever color vinyl or paper or HTV that you stick in there, it's going to cut out all of this as one piece um, all together. OK, now sometimes you want it to be multiple colors right so what you need is basically we're going to slice apart these individual pieces because it's one it's seven dots and two stars right technically you could do seven uh you know seven different colors if you wanted to but not the way that it's done right now so when you slice something you to use the actual um tool over here you have to select two items. One item will be your image and the other item will be whatever shape you bring in. I typically bring in a square. You can bring in a star, I mean, you can bring in a circle, whatever it is that you're used to, but I always use a square, I'm used to that. So here's the trick to slicing. Whatever that you want to break apart from your image, like in this image, for instance, I'm gonna break apart this circle first, okay? then I want to make sure that my square completely covers the circle and only the circle, okay? Because I'm going to do this twice so that you can see it. So you see how the circle is underneath, it's in this corner. So now I'm going to grab my image plus my square and I'm going to slice it. And I'm going to undo this to show you what will happen if you covered more than just the circle. So now I'm going to move apart my square and the piece that is here, it's now up here. So now I have two circles. I usually get rid of this one. And then here's my circle. You see how it's no longer part of my image because I sliced it away from the whole image. You can go and do that, um, you know, for the rest of the, the pieces. So let me undo this and show you what would happen if you um, if the square touched more than just that circle, okay? So I'm undoing it. And this is good practice because then once you understand how it works, then you can determine when to use slicing, when to use contouring, like I do. <laughs> okay, so here is, we're back to the beginning, right? This is one whole image, it moves as one whole image. Now let's say I'm not being careful, I'm grabbing that circle, right? but I accidentally have my square touching this star a little bit. So when I go to slice it, you're gonna have this issue. And you notice how slicing was available? It's only available when you pick up two items. So if your mouse only picks up one, it will still be grayed out because there's nothing to slice it with. If your item picks, if your mouse picks up more than two items, then you've got too many things to slice and it won't be available to you. It will be grayed out like it looks like now, okay? All right, so our square was covering more than the circle and into the little star. So what happens to this image is now I've cut off this tip because whatever was in the, in the square was now pulled sliced away from the image pulled apart from the image so these two things are moving as one right and normally you wouldn't want that because your star the tip is cut off right so you don't want that you need you need to make sure that your square is only covering the pieces that you want to pull apart from the image okay 
So this is where contouring comes in, okay? So save this for now. Hopefully you understand that slicing over here. Um, the other thing is just one more lesson, sorry. Um, you see how this is um, already used? I can still use it. I'm gonna go slice out this circle down here. The only thing about using this used up square is that I need to make sure that my circle does not do something like this, where it pops out in an open image because that will change how this is sliced too. Now only this little teardrop or what moon shape, whatever, is gonna be sliced out. So you need to make sure that whatever you're slicing out is completely covered in the square. So it's right over here. It's gonna look good and you can slice it out, okay? All right. The reason why sometimes you wanna use contouring is exactly what I was saying before, where you want your square to cover just the piece that you wanna remove from the rest of the image, right? So let me show you what this looks like. These are the characters from Hocus Pocus, right? So I'm gonna ungroup it and we're gonna look at the skin. So, uh, let's see. Now, where's my skin? Oh my gosh, there we go. Here's our skin. Let me move this up a little bit. Okay. Now this is right now 6.8 by 3.7. So technically I could have it cut like this on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, right? But you know that I like to do my gigantic projects like the one behind me, right? So a lot of times this won't be that small. It'll be like this where I can't cut it on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. So what I want to do is, for instance, in this um, in this face, sometimes I do the face really, really big, right? Um, I need to separate her face from her neck. And right now, the way the neck is, there's no way that I'm going to be able to get this square and isolate that neck, right? Like I can put it here, but it's gonna cut off a little piece here and here. It's not gonna be a clean cut and I need it to be a clean cut. Otherwise my seams are gonna show, right? So that's the reason why you use contouring. I mean, sometimes it's faster as well, but I would say the main difference as to why I choose to slice versus contouring is that the pieces are too close together and I can't cover that piece that I wanna remove with my square or my circle or whatever shape. Cause look at how detailed it is. It's, there's like, it's scalloped, right? So I can't get anything to work like that. So when you use contouring to separate pieces, right now, just to make it really simple, I wanna separate this into two pieces, right? So right now, all three faces, all the skin color is one piece, right? And we know that because look, when I click on it, and I go look at my right hand side panel, it's one line item. That means everything that you see on here is considered together as one piece. So what I wanna do is I just wanna separate the neck and so the neck will be one piece and then the rest will be the second piece, right? So with contouring, however many pieces that you wanna separate it into is the number of copies that you need. So I want to, I wanna separate this into two pieces, the neck and everything else. So. I'm going to duplicate this so that I have two copies, okay? So I'm gonna move this down a little bit. Okay, so here's my first copy. I'm gonna select on this and I'm gonna go to contour. There's lots of ways to contour. You can either select the pieces here, like in the image, which sometimes I find really hard to do, or you can select it over here individually or I like to start out like when there are a lot of pieces because there are a lot of pieces of the skin, right? I'm gonna hide all. I'm hiding everything. It automatically defaults to this piece up on top. So now I'm gonna go, oops. I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit. Let's see if that will work. Mm, why is it taking so long? Okay, let me change this. If you double click here, you used to be able to change it to 100%. Okay, so that's not working. So let me scroll back up. I wanna scroll down just a bit. Okay, it's not gonna work. Oh my gosh, my mouse is going crazy. Okay, I'm gonna select, I want the neck. So you see how like, oh man, it's really not letting me do it. 
Okay, so I'm gonna look for that neck over here because right now my mouse isn't really working that well. So I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna look for that neck. And it's a scallop neck, so it's not this neck. Let's look for that piece. Where is it? Did I pass it? Okay, let's go back. Sorry, here are the three faces. Oh, was it this piece? No, it's this piece. Here we go. So I don't want this one and I don't want this one. I want this neck only, okay? And I can see it's highlighted right here. Okay, so I'm gonna exit out of this. Everything will disappear except for this lovely neck, okay? Oh, there's a little piece up here. Let's go back to contour. That's how I know because it's, it's still showing like a big circle or a big, big square. Um, I must have accidentally clicked on that button. So let's see where it is. I think it's this piece, okay. So see how it's highlighted? So I'm gonna click on it to remove it. And it's taking a minute. I'm gonna hide all again. Okay, I'm gonna go back up. Cause it's, I don't know, design space is acting a little funky right now. All right, so this is the neck that I want, right? I don't want the face, so I'm gonna deselect the face. Oh my God, that piece came back. What the heck? All right, so something's funky going on with Design Space, but you kind of get what I'm saying, right? So here's the neck. And then on this piece, since we already have the neck, then what we do is you go to contour. And I'll do another example because I feel like this one got so screwed up. Okay, this one, I don't want the neck, right? I want everything but the neck. So I'm gonna select the neck and say, I don't want this to be part of it. And I'm gonna exit out of it. So now I have my two pieces separated that I wouldn't have been able to do with a square or a circle. Cause you see how close it was? I wouldn't be able to isolate that neck to slice it out. So that's why I use contour. So let's look at another example. I'm gonna delete this just so that we're not so um, messed up, so crowded. Okay, let's look at this one again. This one you could also contour, right? You can contour on anything that have that has multiple pieces. So what you could do is, with contouring though, at this point I have, let me get rid of this one. Let's just pretend this is our original piece right here. If I wanted to separate all of these pieces by with each piece by itself, right? I have four, five dots and two stars. So I have seven pieces. If I wanna use contouring, I would need to have seven copies of this image. So already, I don't really like that, right? Cause you have to duplicate it. I mean, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do because if the pieces were so close together, that's what we have to do, right? So I won't do all seven, but you kind of get the idea. Then each one you go to contour, so in this case, I like slicing because I feel like slicing would have been faster because now I got to hide all and it'll leave me with the first one, right? So here's this one. Then I got to do my other six images to isolate each one by using contour. Or I could get a big rectangle or square, right? And slice out the individual pieces like I was doing before. Let's do another one where um, we might want to do this one, okay. Let me make it bigger so we can really see it. So normally with my big off the mat, right? Some of these pieces are really big and I can't cut it as is. So when you see this, this is really, if I wanted to isolate these and separate them into three pieces, ignore these two for now. Just I'm just focusing on these three. They're really close together and really hard for me to get a shape that would only, you know, um, that would only cover one piece at a time. So if I brought in a circle, for example, I would spend so much time trying to make, oh my gosh, sorry, let me delete these things. It's getting too crazy in here. Okay, hopefully that will help, okay. I would spend so much time unlocking this and trying to make this shape work where I would just be isolating this piece, right? Like it's just not going to happen. Not, not easily where I could just go to contour 
make three copies, separate them, right? As opposed to trying to do this. And this doesn't work like, this works right here, but I still got this piece over here, right? I can, let me see if I can, I can try to do it a little bit more. Uh, I can't, right? So let me show you what it would look like if I sliced it. It would not look pretty. So I'm gonna slice it. And, okay, here we go. <laughs> this is what I would get. I would get the piece here and this piece here, right? It's not what I want. So that's why hopefully this explains it all, slicing versus contouring. If you still have questions, please let me know. But it is a great tool to really understand. And I personally, I wanna say for the first two years that I used Design Space, I didn't understand contouring. So you wanna use contouring um, or slicing in general, right? When you wanna separate things out, whether it's so that you can cut it on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock or whatever you know size you have, or if you wanna change like the stars, going back to the first image, the dots and the stars, if you wanted to do multiple colors, right? You would wanna separate them so that you can change the colors and then that way you can cut them on the individual mats. All right, I will see you guys next time. Let me know if there's something else that you want me to go into detail and we can talk about it then. All right, bye guys.